There we go. It's 901. Huh. All right, so when we should have this back out, it's the 2012 2013 Apes study guide. That's me. Right. That's, right. Right. That's, That's my email address, but you know, uh, the reason I have this printed all over the place is because I use these same packets um, with the county. So I don't want them to steal it. So. And actually, never mind, I'm going to say that. So this is divided into the outline, tips for writing, APSA's important environmental legislation, course content notes, example of data set, question example of document based question, example of synthesis and evaluation question, and 115 ways to go apes. This is going to be your favorite thing. This is a cram sheet that I put together. It's got everything you need to know on like three sheets. Oh, so some things you should know about AP exam, it's three hours long. It's going to be in this room and I believe in Mr. McKeever's room. So if you're in this room, you're in this room. I don't know exactly. Um, no, I'm not proctoring it. They won't let the teacher proctor the exam. They are supposed to give. So um, no, I'm not proctoring. I don't know who's proctoring. Usually, um, Anyway, um, so it's three hours long, divided between multiple choice and free response. Uh, multiple, choice, multiple choice section is actually 60% of the grade and the, consists of 100 questions and is based on recall of facts and concepts. So it's just like multiple choice questions that you need in class. Um, and the number of multiple choice questions is taken for each major topic area is reflected in the percentage of the course as designate in the topic outline, we're going to have you guys do a little activity. I think I had you guys do it at the beginning of the year. We're going to have to do it again we did. in a minute and take like 10 minutes to do it um, so you can see if you learn more. Hopefully you did. All right, so there's 90 minutes to answer 100 multiple choice questions. There's no points of deductive or wrong answers. So you want to eliminate as many answers as possible, then choose from the remaining of each question. And then I'm going to give you more tips on that in a minute. Make sure you answer all the questions. And then there's five minutes left during the multiple choice section. What you want to do is finish the questions you're on, fill in all unanswered questions on. Your answer sheet would be, it really doesn't matter if it's B. It's just make sure you use the same letter. Because statistically, you get a higher uh, percentage. You get like, if you were to take a test, any test, and just randomly Fill it in. I think the statistic is you get like 15% right. If you were to take a test, any kind of test, and just put all A or all B or all C, you get 20 to 22% right. So it just bumps up your uh, percentage correct once you can get it. So just remember that on any test, whether it's standardized or in class or wherever you are. Multiple choice. Don't randomly guess. Free response section, which is 40% of the grade, emphasizes that application of principles in greater depth by combining facts that you already know with your own logic and opinions. So the multiple choice tests what you know, like the facts. And then the free response, as you know, because you've seen many of them, um, you got to put those facts together and come up with solutions to the world's problems. Like that. All right, there's going to be four free response questions, and you have 90 minutes to answer those. There's one data set question, and it usually has a table graph or chart. And then there's one document based question. That's where they have that little cutout. Yeah. This is like Fremont Gazette. And then there's like a little reading. That's the document. It's pretty short. And then there's two synthesis evaluation questions. Usually one has a mathematical calculation, and the other requires you to design an experiment. <clears throat> and remember, there's no calculators on the test. That's why yeah. I didn't let you have the questions. All right, so this is what you're going to do for a little bit. This is an activity. So use the topic outline to its fullest complete the following. Uh, one, you're going to look at each subtopic and determine whether or not you could write a short essay on the subtopic or have a discussion. Yeah. Like talk to somebody about the topic. If you could write a short essay on the subtopic, use your pencil, draw a line through that subtopic. If you could not write a short essay or have a conversation, you want to highlight it or leave it blank. So basically, 
what you're going to do now, the next two pages are topic outline. You're going to go through and say, okay, earth system resources, uh, geological time scale. Do I know the geological time scale? No, I don't. So I'm going to leave it blank. If you, if you do, maybe you don't. Um, plate tectonics. Do I know enough about plate tectonics to write an essay, like a short essay, or have a conversation about it? Sure, yeah, I do. So you can draw a line to that. Earthquakes. Okay, I know about earthquakes. So you draw a line to that. So whatever you know, you draw a line through. Whatever you don't know, you either highlight or leave blank. So you want to do it for this page and for this page. So we're going to stop right now and you're going to take about 10 minutes to do this. Don't worry about what your partner, neighbor, friend is doing or what they know or don't know because this is all individualized. So we just and highlight. this is just for your own information. So we just highlight what we don't know what we don't know. Yeah, you, you draw a line through what you know and you leave blank or highlight what you don't know. So can we highlight what we know and leave blank? No, do it the way it's because no. you get confused. So draw a line through what you know and leave blank or highlight what you don't know. So I'll give you 10 minutes to do that. Questions? All right.